So yes, more nostalgia, more nostalgia. At this point, my channel talks a lot about nostalgic brands and streetwear, uh, but today we're, we're gonna talk about it again. We're gonna talk about the early 2000s Y2K streetwear brands that were hot back then that I believe can make a comeback in 2020. They can, they can potentially pop again. It's your boy Keezy. It ain't easy being Keezy. Let's get it. In 1999, there was a brand called Von Dutch. And if you're wondering, is the brand still around today? Yes, they are still around today. But their popularity and their peak, if you ask me, was more so in the Y2K era, early 2000s. And maybe it was because of people like Britney Spears and other celebrities rocking it at the time that created this brand to have a, such an iconic logo that you see right here. This logo was plastered on many different types of garments, but more specifically, t-shirts and of course the iconic trucker hat made by von dutch very very popular at the time and i think they also kind of uh graduated in the look of all these bedazzled type of looks i think don't quote me on that but if i can reflect back a little bit von dutch uh, really was more popular with the women and then maybe towards the tail end of its popularity i saw some rappers wearing von dutch here and there but i'm not a hundred percent sure on exactly what happened but from what i've heard i think there was a designer from von dutch that ended up leaving and he went to ed hardy if someone knows that information better than i do correct me in the comments below but if that's what happened maybe that's the reason why the popularity had kind of taken a dip but why i bring up this brand is because i actually think that von dutch um does have an opportunity in 2020 to come back around i mean and one good sign that i'm seeing for von dutch is I'm seeing a lot more people wearing it on Instagram, more specifically women. I'm seeing the trucker hat kind of float back around a little bit, and I am seeing some people kind of rock the garments here and there. Hopefully I can show you some photo examples of what I'm talking about. Um, the photos here, these are you know present day 2020 stuff that you're seeing of the brand. Now I don't know if you know the brand itself is actually going out and reaching to influencers and things like that, but I would say that might be the only push that the brand would need. Uh, in order to kind of break back into the market itself. And the other reason I'm gonna give before we move on to number two is that the current youth that is getting into uh, this style of clothing most likely was not around during the early 2000s to even remember what Von Dutch was. So now there's fresh eyes uh, on this brand that probably wouldn't have any stigma. Who knows, but again, a lot of brands from the early 2000s are coming back anyway, but Von Dutch for sure should be on that list. So leading up to Von Dutch, I'm also going to be talking about Ed Hardy. I mean, if anybody that's watching this grew up during the Y2K after like the urban era, so to speak, then we kind of moved into the swag boy era. But right in between the swag boy era, moving into the early 2010s, you for sure had Ed Hardy coming out and Ed Hardy flooded the streets. And it was something fresh and it was something new. And more importantly, it was something accessible. As a consumer myself during the era, I was so obsessed with Evisu because I wanted it so bad, but I couldn't buy it. So I was left to buy things like Ed Hardy because they were sold at local stores downtown San Francisco and things like that. But I would say after 2013, 2014, you really just didn't see Ed Hardy being sold anywhere and if it was being sold somewhere it would just sat on the shelf and it really become a brand of aesthetic that seemed to be a little bit outdated that was now clumped in the same section of things like true religion and what have you a couple reasons as to why i think ed hardy has its potential to make its comeback is that my last couple trips to asia specifically china they still have Ed Hardy stores in China, as well as many other stores you would just not think that they would have in, in China, because it's a completely different market over there, right? I mean, this it's kind of stigma-free depending on how you approach the market in China. But there are actual standalone Ed Hardy stores. I mean, that's unheard of if you talk about the States, or at least in California. I have not ever seen an Ed Hardy store in Cali. That just didn't happen. You would see it in like a Nordstrom's or something like that or like lower end tier street style stores back in the day, but not necessarily a store. Um, and mind you, my last trip to Asia was like a year ago, not even. And seeing that, I was like, wow, so 
I mean, you've already tapped into this market. I didn't necessarily see people walking the street with Ed Hardy on, not necessarily, but they had full on stores in multiple malls. And the other lead up to me believing that Ed Hardy can come back is that now Ed Hardy has stepped in and I think they just collaborated with Antisocial Social Club. I mean, you can have your own opinions on that. But I actually like that collaboration. I have never liked anything from Antisocial ever. Uh, but I, I think the graphic that they chose to do on, on the back of the t-shirt, I thought that was a pretty good idea and it, it looked a lot better than what I've seen in the past, especially like Antisocial and Panda Express, I guess. And also the last thing I would say about Ed Hardy is that Ed Hardy had always had very unique designs for a brand. I mean, the, the guy that owned the brand was a tattoo artist as far as I can remember. Uh, and also he was a pretty well-known tattoo artist and there weren't that many brands uh, putting logos like that, that specific look onto denim and embroidering it um, and at a slightly affordable cost. I mean, it wasn't $500 denim. It was like, a, you know, roughly $170, maybe $230 at the most, depending on which pair that you bought. So, I mean, if they approach the market one more time, maybe switch up a little bit and still kind of keep that classic look of Ed Hardy. I would not doubt that the new generation of people that are jumping into streetwear that might not even know about it will look at it and be like, hey, like this is something actually tight and I wouldn't mind buying into it. This next one, I've already, I'm gonna be repeating myself, but I'm gonna repeat myself anyway because I don't care, right? Jerbode, yes, MF plus G or M plus FG, I don't know what it was, okay? But there's the famous shuttle pants from Jerbode, all right? Almost specifically the pants, but the brand itself, I, I believe it's still around and I think that they still make clothes. I haven't really checked up on it and I don't see anybody wearing it. The only time I see people actually wearing Jerbode is because it's for nostalgic reasons and they go on Grailed and they buy an old pair of Jerbodes and they, you know, they take a fit pick in it or something like that, right? And then there's the flip side of it where people are remaking the shuttle pants, but this is what irks me the most. People are remaking this look, but they're creating them to be skinny jeans. Stop making them into skinny jeans. Just stop, please make them into straight pants or maybe slightly baggy because not only are most people floating away from skinny jeans, but also they're supposed to be shuttle pants. Like, yes, we want the straps and stuff, but we want them to be a little bit looser. I at least want to be able to take my ankle out when I take the pants off. Anyways, I, I can rant about that all day. But going back on topic, Jabod for sure, for sure, for sure, can come back and if they remade these pants in a more modern fit for people in the right colorways, for sure, 1000%, they can hit the market again and people will act as if it never left. So next up, we got a brand that I've been wanting to talk about. And you know, if Alex is watching this, shout out to Mr. Ford hat, he's, he's gonna like this one. I think, I think that uh, Tisa can, can make its comeback for sure. Absolutely. You know, shout out to Taz Arnold, you know what I'm saying? The whole swag boy era, you know, floating out of the swag boy era. I still think uh, to this day that the Tisa hats, they look they look cool, man. Like, I mean, that, that side logo, and I don't know if they were actually remade hats where he made the hat themselves, where he just kind of copied the logo and then put the Tisa on the side, or did he just take actual, uh, either Mitchell and Essa hats or whatever, and then put his logo on there. I'm not sure how that worked because I wasn't that big into Tisa back then. I always liked it back then and I would still like it now. Would I rock it in 2020? Yeah, yeah, I would, if, if the hat fit right. I mean, I got a smaller dome so I can't really fit all hats, right? Not all hats really look good on the kid. But if they come back and it fits my head all right, you better believe I'm gonna rock a Tisa hat in 2020. I would not mind it. Would I rock a Tisa sweater? That is a different story. That's a different story. But I think for the brand in general, Y2K, uh, or just uh, the 2007-2008 era moving into the 2010s, it, it made a, a big impact for that time period and the newer generation needs to know more about it and maybe they don't know about it. So that's also another entry point um, as well. But I think also what was great about Tisa, and especially if they make a comeback with the hats and stuff, is that they were a brand that really 
brought to the table a product of familiarity, right? It was just so familiar. You knew what the hat was. It was those simple logos that you find at the new era store, right? Or hat club, but yet it had its side logo and it made it so much, it had such a different feel. I mean, not only were the celebrities and the rappers wearing it, but it had a different feel because it had the, the Tisa shit on the side. And I'm just saying, man, if Taz, Taz, if you're watching this somehow, I don't know, somehow, somewhere, if you're watching my video, I'm just telling you, bro, you come back with the Tisa, it's going to sell out. It's going to sell out. I could put money on that. In fact, I, I would put money on that. So how am I going to make this video without talking about Ivisu? How, how, how are we going to do that? We, we almost can't. And, it, and this category is almost stretched far past Ivisu because there's other brands that are clumped in there as well. But I'm going to bring up Ivisu for obvious reasons. I think for the Western side of the world, Ivisu for sure needs to uh, work on the marketing that they're doing. Although, you know, they did get Travis to wear it a couple times and apparently Travis is going to do a collaboration with them. They did do the collaboration with Palace. Palace seems to be picking up a lot of OG brand names at this point that we're also going to talk about towards the end of this video. But uh, again, Ivisu's marketing for the Western side of the world needs to be reapproached in a different way. And this is coming from a long time supporter, as you can tell. I mean, I've been wearing this shit forever, like literally forever. Like I mentioned before, I've stood through the rain with this brand i have been a supporter since it was dead here in the west coast you couldn't even find it anywhere you, the only place you can find it was leftovers on ebay you know what i'm saying i was still buying it in those times so my perspective is that the marketing should not be the same marketing that ivisu is using for the eastern side of the world mainly china right china is a completely different marketplace compared to the usa period although they you know they do adapt certain things but the u.s more specifically loves things that are nostalgic i don't know about china but the u.s loves nostalgia all right especially right now in 2020 people are floating back we're not going to the 90s people are going to the 2000s and what was hot in the 2000s ivisu straight up so if i were to just give a little hint out there depending on who's watching this video right now longtime supporter my perspective is that bring back those older pieces, bring back the 2005 goal that we all love. Almost everybody loves that goal. No matter what part of the world you go to, all the Ivisu supporters that uh, uh, message me and DM me and uh, we chat about this kind of stuff, the 2005 goal is, is where it's at. If that's even the correct year or information, but that's where, where it's at and that needs to be revived. And there are so many different design aspects uh, that could be switched up for the western side of the, of the globe that could potentially tap back into the market period end of discussion i can go hours on this people know i can go hours on this in fact i can make ivisu an hour-long presentation video on how to break back into the western world unless you cut me a check i'm gonna say what i have to say but right now i'm gonna keep my distance i'm still a fan i'm a spectator you know what i mean and i help promote y'all a lot because i love the brand and i always have i always will it will always hold a special place in my heart but there's certain things that need to be tweaked and there's certain brands that you can collaborate with right now that can help you out. One being, and I'll leave it off with this, one being, why don't you hit up Grailed? Yeah, sounds strange, doesn't it? But you can collab with Grailed. Grailed is a great place for a lot of consumers that see the homepage, right? And, and then eventually go to the search page in order to find new things. But before they hit that search page, when they see the homepage, why don't you pay them to have an ad there? Because that will tap right into the market that you're specifically trying to go to. Anyways, I got a whole game plan for Ivisu, but if they're willing to hear it, they're willing to hear it. If not, then, you know, it is what it is. Let's move on. Okay, so we're gonna end off this video, of course, with the last brand, uh, and that's going to be Avarex. Avarex, Avarex. I don't know how people actually pronounce it. I don't know which one the real one is. But Avarex had its popularity for sure during the 90s uh, and also floating into the 2000s. Maybe the end of, uh, of the 2000s uh, is really kind of when it kind of dwindled uh, for the Western side of the globe. But I'm bringing up this brand, not because of the Palace collaboration. I see what they're doing at Palace, by the way. Someone behind there, the design team knows what's up with Ivisu and Avarex right now. Anyway, before I digress, but I'm bringing this up because my last trip to uh, Japan, of course, Asia has a, a different market, no different than how I was talking about Ed Hardy. But when I was in Harajuku, I saw an Avarex store, full-on Avarex store, huge, 
big old store in, in, in I guess that's downtown. I don't, I don't know if that's the correct words for it. But I saw an Averex store in there. But the interesting thing about Averex is that when I went into the store, the aesthetic of Averex as a brand felt more as if it was like a, a Top Gun type of thing. And when I say Top Gun, I mean like the movie, like actually flying a plane. Like some of those jackets, they, they literally just look like bombers that you would actually get into a plane with, you know what I mean? Um, and they had a lot of logos that have patches with wings on them, like lieutenant type of sergeant type of jackets and things like that. I'm probably not using the correct words, but that's as far as I can remember. Um, but you talk about, you know, hip hop, it had a huge influence and it had a huge name um, for those times for rap coming up and rappers wearing it a lot, right? So I think if they were to break back into the US market, for sure it can it can happen again i mean it's been well over 10 years and and a lot of the youth that are getting into clothing right now they don't know about Averex. and also i don't think Averex had any stigmas to it and also the price pointing was decent i mean come on the Averex jackets the Averex jackets were hard the Averex jackets were hard so on this topic of this brand i brought it up last because um i think it slept on i think it slept on and since it doesn't have stigmas in my eyes it, it can for sure make its comeback i mean they already did the whole thing with palace anyway right so if they worked with more brands maybe they can make that happen and we can see more of the brand moving into 2021 we don't know but entirely the the looks that you might have thought were cringe back in the day you know, as time passes, you know, time heals all wounds, they say. So 20 years later, 15 years later, 14 years later, you might look back on some of that stuff and you'd be like, wait a minute, that shit was lit. That shit actually was lit. You know what I'm saying? So we don't, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen, but I can tell you that a majority of these brands I talked about here today, if you got the right marketing team behind you, you got the right design team behind you, and you tap in with the right collaborations, boy, you could pop. You already got the name. You you don't you're not starting fresh, not necessarily. You already got the name. You got the history behind you. You just need that extra uwa to go with it. So, anyways, so closing this out. I appreciate everyone uh, tuning into this video. Of course, we're gonna have some more videos on the way. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys and girls keep it locked from clothing, music to culture. It's your boy Keezy. We'll see you next time. Peace. You wanna do, and it's just gonna take a minute, but it's gonna work out. Like, like, if you try to cut corners and you put f***ing costumes on and do shit, yeah, you just, you gonna get straight, but at what cost, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And how you feel. When you do this shit for you, 100% for you, you can grind and stay up for five or six days and not really be tired because it's for you, you.